From mobile phones packing the power of a laptop computer to tiny MP3 players that let us carry our entertainment anywhere, the digital revolution is clearly underway. And nowhere is it more evident than along the paths and hallways of our college campuses. Using devices discreet enough to fit in their pockets, today's students chat with friends in far-flung networks, scroll through just-in-time news updates, and capture and share snapshots of the world as it unfolds around them. They catalog their lives in an ever-growing journal of tweets, blog posts, pictures, and videos, and they collaborate with little regard to time, place, or identity in an always-on connection to an expanding sea of information. If we follow their lead, if we watch the world through our learners' eyes, the blueprints for our campus learning environments might reveal a similar balance between physical collaboration and virtual interaction. If we designed our spaces with today's students in mind, they might blur the lines between time and place. They would be flexible, collaborative, focused on creation and sharing. In the labs and virtual spaces around the world, that vision is already underway. Join Educause now as we take a brief look at the future of learning environments. By its very definition, the lecture hall once conjured images of a single lectern and a sea of bolted down chairs. But today's formal classrooms put students at the center of knowledge building and content creation, encouraging learners to turn around in their chairs, discuss with their peers, or simply toss their own ideas onto a screen. The faculty member is no longer at the front of the room, but walks between students, offering guidance or coaching through content. New classroom designs promote flexible furnishings, allowing single rooms to morph from lecture hall to small group discussion or seminar debate. They use seating that fosters rather than stifles discussion, encouraging teams to share ideas with each other and their classmates. Technology is not merely included, but woven through the space, allowing uninterrupted access to rich media, social networks, and the vast resources of the internet. And in some cases, the classroom itself is part of the lesson transporting students from reading about their disciplines to taking an active part in discovery. We're also learning more about when students learn, and it's not just during class time or within the four walls of the classroom. Our informal learning spaces, libraries, student unions, campus cafes, are increasingly morphing into places for collaboration, discovery, and discussion. Attractive, comfortable furniture lures undergraduates to convene impromptu meetings in the hall. Pervasive technology gives students access to the cutting-edge tools they crave to create and build content. Projectors and alcoves create opportunities to test drive presentations and share ideas with peers. Informal spaces are no longer just about quiet contemplation and reflection. They often become sources of energy, creativity, and collaboration. Places where students can connect to one another and to institutional resources in a single hub of learning. Taking flight to get a closer look at the Sistine Chapel's details Experiencing a hallway through the eyes of a schizophrenic patient. Watching a tsunami crash on a nearby shore. Situations we once would never have dared to dream are now within our grasp through virtual environments. Online worlds like Second Life immerse students in discovery, allowing them to talk with classmates around the world from their desktop, assuming the role of travelers, doctors, journalists, or entrepreneurs in virtual space or simply take field trips to see places and have experiences not possible within the physical realm. Any space, a bumper car, a pyramid, a virtual representation of Edgar Allan Poe's house, becomes a meeting place, a classroom, or a space to discover. Using high-performance networks and cyber infrastructure, students can link in to the very tools that scientists use in the field, running their own experiments with nanotubes or simulating earthquakes from more than a thousand miles away. 
or they can simply walk through experiments in a virtual setting, working their way through complex problems and scenarios. I think the essence of life is motion. I think what drives mobility is the same thing that drives our fascination with moving pictures. It drives our fascination with something as simple as、uh, travel. There is something in the essence of being an animal that etymologically means being able to move. It's what the poor turnips and radishes are unable to do, except in limited ways. So there, there's something I think essentially human at the heart of our experience of being、uh, embodied. That has to do with motion. It's no longer about accessing information from a single place. It's about carrying that portal in your hand. Using mobile devices and location-aware technology, today's classrooms are not merely transcending the physical and virtual spaces. They are constantly in motion, relying on mobile phones, laptops, tablets, cameras, and MP3 players to take learning mobile. Books can be downloaded and browsed with the click of a button. Course content captured and consumed while sitting at the bus stop or waiting in line. It's not just about the ways we consume content on the go, but the new ways today's mobile environments are allowing students to create it. Pictures can be captured in the field and instantly geotagged, creating rich maps to uncover patterns. Audio and video can be gathered on the street or in the field, turning students into citizen journalists. And rich online data can be superimposed over the physical world, creating rich multimedia experiences that blur the lines between what we see and what we can learn. Content is no longer in a single place; it's accessible in any place.